It's Alex's final day in the Lake District, helping the Gilpin, a fine dining hotel in desperate need of a new executive head chef. Over the last 25 years, John and Christine Cunliffe have fulfilled their ambition of owning an award-winning country house hotel. Their son Barney and daughter-in-law Zoe have now joined ranks and they've set their sights on a Michelin star. We compete in a, probably one of the most competitive areas, I reckon, outside of London. So we're constantly trying to make sure that we maintain ourselves at that top end and we want the best chef. We've been under a lot of stress and uh, I, it would be lovely not to have to have that anxiety. You know, we've been searching now for almost a year, haven't we? Yes. And, and it's been a long search. We've been, I know we're very picky. Hiring the wrong chef could be disastrous for their reputation and business. So the family are prepared to pay up to six figures. I think we haven't found the right chef yet because actually I'm asking for a really tough challenge. But with Alex's help, the search is almost over. It's a big day. This is Barney and Christine's chance of a new start. After advertising the post, nine applicants were interviewed for this life-changing position. He's been at the Ritz, he's been at the Juniper, which are all good places. During a fiery few days of cooking, oh my God. six got the chop. Lee's dishes didn't reach expectations. I'm not mad about that dish. No, not in the environment that we, that we would be serving it in. It's, it's a bit heavy. Nicolas' job hopping was a concern. He's obviously mm. good. It's just whether he's good and he's a stayer. My suitcase, I'm, I'm fed up to see it. Michael's style wasn't fine dining. Well, we've been looking forward to this. It's, it's not too delicate, Michael. Ian's first dish didn't catch their eye. I don't like the plate with that dish. No, I very good point. I think if you're going to use a dark plate, you need to have really vibrant colours. Simon's longevity was questioned. Can we immediately address the elephant in the room, which yeah. is that uh, you've never been anywhere very long. And Alan's nerves got the better of him. Sorry, Alan, we've distracted you. Can someone give us a time? But three did make the grade and have been shortlisted for today's final day-long interview. Simon Szymanski. Simon, well done. Rishikesh Desai. That last dish was superb. And Ben Murphy. We had very high expectations and you delivered. Perfect, thank you. Thank you very much. Only the best will win the position to be the hotel's new executive head chef. I mean, I think what's very interesting is we've got three such different candidates mm. and actually, ultimately, they're all good. It's just who suits you as a family best. And I think that's what we're trying to really work out today. We're in a win-win today, I think, um, to be honest with you, because we've got three great chefs competing uh, today in the interviews. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward with great interest to in see how it pans out. I mean, it's... Uh, they're all very they're different. Very, they are they? very different. And we need to find a little bit more about um, their, their weaknesses as well as their strengths. Mm. It's an early start. First to arrive is Simon Szymanski. As time goes by, I'm definitely more emotional about the job. I'm lying in bed thinking about it, thinking what I can do, you know, how's the kitchen looking, how's it working. It's just, it's non-stop, it's 24 hours a day. If anything, I can't concentrate on nothing else. Simon has spent a decade working in Birmingham's best restaurants, cooking Michelin-starred food, before running his own restaurant for three years. I'll cut my little finger off now if you want me. <laughs> That's how much I want it. In Simon's initial interview, he was 10 minutes late with his first dish. A little bit longer. Sorry, guys. But the wait was worth it. Well, I love it. I, like, I do love curry and I do love um, that combination. What are you looking for from Simon's dishes today? Personally, I think, I think Simon probably has um, proven himself management-wise, and he has proven in a Michelin background. So I think for Simon, it's all about the food today. He's mm. got to excel on that. 
without mistakes. Exactly. I mean, you're going to practice your dishes on something mm. like this, aren't you? Yeah. So, I mean, you're, you're, you're practicing, you're tasting, you're practicing, you're tasting. Our second applicant is Rishikesh Desai. I really, really want to win this. I'm going to go there with full confidence and with a very positive mind. An accomplished fine dining chef who has spent his career building his skills for a position like this. To be the executive head chef of a country house hotel for someone who's born in India will be a dream come true. I know I can cook, I know I can manage a team, and I know I can run a kitchen, and I think that's, that's the best way to tell my strength. In the initial interview, Rishikesh's talent clearly showed in his dishes. I have one word to say, which is yummy. But there were concerns that his presentation was too formal. It's a very classic presentation. Yeah. I, think, I think there is a trend towards a more organic, um, mixed up look. Rishikesh, mm -hmm. when I say safe pair of hands, I mean that as a compliment. Mm. He is someone who has proven his loyalty, his abilities, uh, his consistency. If anything let him down, maybe it was slightly his presentation that was a little bit old-fashioned. Yes. And I think we've got to be very careful of that. I think we're still a fine dining, classic restaurant. Mm. But, you know, that doesn't mean you can't create a little bit of twist. And finally, Ben Murphy. If I was to win this, it would be very life-changing. Yeah, OK, I'm 24, it shouldn't be a problem, but, yeah, what happens next? Yeah, it would be good. Crowned Young National Chef of the Year, Ben's already a kitchen prodigy. I love cooking. I really enjoy it because at the end of the service, when you know you've done a good job and you, you've pleased the customer and the plates come back empty, it's a really good feeling. There was no question his cooking earned him a rightful place in this last interview. Absolutely delicious. I love the combination. But there was a big question about his ability to be the boss. So you can clearly cook. I like to think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but your man management skills? I haven't got as much experience as the other guys in the kitchen, I know that. Ben, who's the baby of the group? <laughs> He's very, very confident, but he has he been exposed to any sort of management? He's in a huge, bit of busy three Michelin star restaurant. I doubt whether he would have been allowed to get involved in that side. Yes. He's a very likeable yeah. young man, yeah. isn't he? They all and, are. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but to, for his age, he's very mature. Let's go and see our chefs. Ben was shortlisted for Young National Chef of the Year. All right. And nice. that's, the, that's the competition which I won in 2010. Yeah. So I was judging him. Uh, and he won the competition, yeah. It was Fair brilliant. Place, yeah. So you've all had a, a nice little uh, accolade to yourself there, boys, you know? I feel yeah. like the... He's got... No Mino-like. <laughs> Hello, good Hello. morning. Good morning. morning. Hi, guys. Morning. 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 Welcome morning. back, all of you. Thank you. So you did very well in the first rounds of interview, but this is, of course, the final, and uh, this is the real test. How are you all feeling? Nervous and anxious, I think it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. To test their head chef skills, Simon, Rishikesh and Ben have been asked to pre-plan a three-course menu to be served to a full restaurant. So, I have to tell you, there is one small twist in the tale, which is that we've decided that we can't really have all three of you cooking different menus for a full service this evening. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take your starters, try them, and after that, one of you will go. No you know, good luck, all of you. I really hope you have a successful day for all of you. They have 45 minutes for their starter. The dish will need to fit with the hotel's 58-pound four-course menu, show great skill, be presented well, and be on budget. The combined ingredients for the starter dish should total three pounds. Any more, and the difference would have to be made up in the remaining courses. Do you reckon it's a bit tight for the timings for your starters, boys? Or uh, happier? The problem with this is we are always against time. So always. No matter how many hours we are given. So people appreciate it a bit more. Yeah, now. Uh, just got to get it done and see what happens. Exactly. Shocking announcement, yes, uh, but that's what the competition is all about. Uh, you just got to keep calm uh, and carry on, simple as that. I've got full confidence in my starter, so hopefully it's enough. 
So obviously uh, the bombshell has just been dropped. Uh, it's a little bit uh, more pressure now. So, but we've come this far, and I'm definitely not going to go home. I'm like a sponge; I absorb the pressure. Simon's dishes are all about honouring traditional British ingredients, which he sources from his local farm shop in Shropshire. My style of cooking is take an older dish, put a bit of a modern twist in it, nothing wild and wacky, you've all had it before, you'll recognise what it is, but just with a little hint of modernism, really. Size five football, that is. My favourite bit about cooking has got to be the customer's faces at the end of the product when they've eaten it and they give you good feedback and they're happy. I've got Gemma, who's my partner. I've got two children. You have to have a good family relationship, you know, all the hours you do, all the stress you're under. It'll be a change of lifestyle, obviously, you know, fresh air up there rather than city life. The people that I'm competing against are winners of their heats as well, so you have to step up to the next level. There's no room for error. The biggest person that's going to criticise me is Gemma. <laughs> no, doing Barney, Christine or Alex. The final dishes, I have actually tried all of them. Um, I can personally say that they are absolutely amazing. I would be ridiculously proud of him. Um, he so does thoroughly deserve it. What is this? It's hazelnut tart. That is just made it. I don't like it. <laughs> uh, hopefully we can pull it off. To impress Alex and the owners, Simon is planning to prepare a starter of smoked haddock rarebit with beetroot and pickled onion. Hi, Barney, how's it going, Oit? I'm going well. Uh, more importantly, how are you doing? Uh, touch and go, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your rare bit mix there? Yeah, that's a rare bit mix there, yep. What have you got in that mix? Um, in the mix, uh, obviously, I um, make a roux, flour yep. and uh, butter, uh, milk, and then a uh, bit of Worcester sauce, classic, really, and a bit of mustard, and then uh, put your cheese into there to give the flavour of the rare bit. So, yeah. You confident? Uh, yep. A bit more time with good, but that's it. <laughs> I'll leave you Thank you very it. much. All right. Thank you. What do you think of the idea of it? Depends how he executes it, it doesn't it? I mean, it could be very crude or it could be something very clever. It could be, yes. It's got to be clever, but it's not. Uh, uh, it's quite a trend to pick something that's quite... Um, to reinvent a sort of a home-cooked dish, like cheese on toast or whatever, and reinvent <gasps> it as yes. something really yeah. clever. I love that. And it can I work. Say. Yeah. He's given us a cost price for the dish of £3.42. Um, and I think it looks quite realistic. He's done a very detailed breakdown, which is always a pleasure to see. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to this. I it, love a rabbit. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. It's one of my favourites. Good. Ben's choice of starter is salmon wrapped in beetroot with a horseradish cream. To cook his salmon, he's using a professional vacuumed water bath called a sous vide. He then coats it in a beetroot emulsion to set. Hi, right, Ben. Hi, how are you? As always, minimalism on your description, but I can see that it's not on the plate. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you've sous vide the salmon yeah, here. Basically what I did, how long for? And yeah, what it's on 56 degrees for about eight minutes. O only eight minutes? Eight minutes. Six. If it goes over, it's not a problem. Yeah. It'll stay at that consistency. Yeah. And then after this, I took it out, I lay it to cool, and then I have a, a beetroot juice. Yeah. There's a certain uh, quantity of kappa, which is a chemical for yeah. setting jelly. Yeah. So this, I dip into the beetroot juice. So then you see the outside with the salmon, which is nicely just cooked. So yeah, it's very pretty, but big flavor. Well, it looks great. Okay. I'll uh, leave you to finish off. But, Cheers. Um, Thank you. Catch you later. Thank you very much. Currently, Ben works at an award-winning restaurant in Paris, but never forgets where his career began in London. He has even sought advice for his dishes from his mentor, the legendary chef, Pierre Kaufman. This is where it all first started for me. I went from college to my first job, so for me, for me especially, this is, this is home, you know? When I first started here, I was 17. I actually started around the back of the corner. I wasn't allowed to see the service because I was just peeling carrots. <laughs> With Ben, he's quite an exceptional person, you know. He enjoys what he's doing, he's passionate about his cooking, his job, you know. Did you enjoy your time in France? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's good, yeah. yeah. He comes time to time to say hello. He always comes with a big smile and his first subject is cooking, you know. I'm just keeping it very simple. Flavours that work together. You can't really, uh, can't really go wrong. It looks beautiful. I'm, I'm nowhere near where I want to be. Marcus Wayne, for instance, he got his first mission start at 25. 
So, so why can't I get mine at 24? His description just goes salmon, beetroot, horseradish. Wizardry. <laughs> <laughs> There's a touch of the magic circle about this. Yeah, he will have some magic on there, I'm sure, but um, the style is to do a very minimalist description. I think what it allows is your service staff to interact with your customers, because that is the moment where you can say, would you like me to explain that, what, how, how this dish is constructed? So his cost for his starter is £3.78. He's using lots of not very expensive items, and there's, I mean, he's adding the value. Mm through mm. his cooking. The science of it. Rishikesh's starter blends the best of European ingredients with the best of Indian spices. For him, this job offers the perfect opportunity to progress a career built in country house hotels. Now I'm working at Lucknow Park, which is a country house hotel. I started there as a baby 10 years ago. We got the Mission Star in 2006, and since then I've headed up the kitchen. I've been into the brasserie, headed up the kitchen up there, and we've got a brand new addition, which is the cookery school, so I'm heading that right now at this present moment. It's a very, very special place. I found my wife here, Aga. We even got married here, <laughs> so it is that special. Rishikesh hopes the award-winning skills he has learned here are enough to get him the prestigious job, so he can move his family to the lakes. Family is very, very important. His chances are good, I hope so. His cooking is great, and I think so that gives him a good chance. I really want this job at Kilpin. I feel that I'm ready to take a new challenge. All I need to do is calm my nerves and just do what I do. For his starter, he is serving hand-dived scallops, haddock fritters, and pickled saffron carrots with a tomato and cumin dressing. What do we think? I think it sounds exciting. <laughs> Again, looking forward to it. Yeah. It's, it's all how it's executed. Scallops is a, is a big classic favourite, no doubt about it. His uh, portion is £4.75. Well, well, we know scallops are expensive. Mm. Yes, these are the hand-dived ones, which are very expensive. Let's just hope that that comes off further on in his menu. Costs, as well as cooking, will be a factor in deciding who gets the job. Hello, Bernie. You look under pressure here. Yes, uh, I'm running, I'm running. You've got the most components on your dish, I think. I think that's the style of cooking, You, you don't make life easy, do you? No, I think <laughs> when you're working in a place and you want to be a head chef, you need to make sure you show most of your skills. Yeah. But at the same time, understand business. And you reckon you're spicing as well? You've got a bit of that in, you're going to get it balanced right? I should get that balance right, yeah, yeah. Uh, because scallops and spice, dangerous combination. But when it's subtle, yeah. brilliant. Brilliant. Well, I know you, I can see you want to get on, so I'll leave you to it. Thank you so much. Catch you later. Thank you. Good luck. In a fine dining kitchen, it's the final flourishes that transform a dish from middle of the road to magnificent. Time's up. Ben and Rishikesh have finished, but as in his first interview, Simon is late to plate. Looking nice, Ben. Be true, be true. It's been a nightmare, isn't it? <laughs> so we've got an extra ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, boys. Ready? Shall we? Yeah, let's go. Yeah? So, yeah. yeah. OK. Well then, boys. Well, no, mine is normal to well, yours. <laughs> Hi, guys. How's it going, boys? Good. Thank you very much. For his starter, Simon's presenting haddock rarebit on a bed of beetroot and pickled onions. At £3.42, his dish is closest to the hotel's £3 budget. But has it met the fine dining brief? Definitely confident. Definitely, definitely. So, yeah, couldn't be any more confident, to be fair. I think the fish is perfectly cooked. Wow. Nice dish, lovely to eat. The tastes are nice. I don't like the presentation. I think it's a bit clumpy. 
tell you the truth. It's a great idea, and it's such a shame that you didn't quite get the yeah. presentation sorted. It's a bit dated, Simon. It's, it's Gary Rhodes 20 years ago. Yeah. And I think it could have done with some more mustard in it. OK. It's something I would very happily eat at home. Mm. Rishikesh has made pan-fried scallops, smoked haddock fritters and pickled saffron carrots with a tomato and cumin dressing. At £4.75, he's well over the set budget. But does the money show on the plate? The way I envisage that starter to be, it has come out exactly the same. So I think so. I think I've done enough. Flavour's good. I'm not mad about the presentation again. I think it could have been simplified a little bit, but I, everything's cooked beautifully, you know, the scallops perfect. I just love all the flavours. They're exciting, they're different, they surprise me, um, and it's delicious. I liked it very much. Mm. I agree, I love it. I, I love... Uh, the, the, the saffron carrots are a revelation. Mm. That was, to me, the highlight of it, and I actually don't like carrots. This is quite a big dish for a starter. I think if it was fitting in the set menu, in a four or five course menu, you certainly don't feel like you're being cheated by getting three half no, scallops. No, absolutely not, no, no. <laughs> Ben's starter is salmon wrapped in beetroot with a horseradish cream. It cost £3.78, but will it deliver the surprise wow factor he was hoping for? No, I don't want to go home yet, so... So, yeah, hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, it's good enough. I love the presentation mm. of that. It's so pretty. Very simple, classic combinations turned into a very retro dish. How would you be able to teach that to uh, junior members of a team? Is it simple or could you, you just drop it in? I, I dip it and enrol it in, mm. yeah. Mm. It's really nice mm. to see, you know, seasonal, mm. local, delicious. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Well, nice. Well, Alex, Barney and Christine must now decide which chef to let go. Simon made a classic mistake. That dish was not what we were looking for today, yeah. and that is all we're judging him on. Yes. Mm. I mean, it was just this great big lump on a plate. Mm. And I really can't understand that when you're going up for um, such a big, life-changing job... You that you don't practice. ..that you don't practice. practice. Yes. <sighs> Ben's showing a maturity and presence that doesn't reflect his age. No, not at all. And he has this quiet authority. That was a lovely, clean, tasting, simple. Mm. I mean, it's just fantastic on every level. Rishikesh's was delicious, but honestly, I want to see something from him that is not just lots of different blobs on a plate at this point. Well, I think Ben's was probably a little bit uh, cleaner in the presentation, but I still thought that uh, Rishikesh's dish was a very pretty dish. And there was more complexity of flavour there. More skills, really. Well, in a way, this has been made easier for us because I think the decision at this point is pretty clear. Yeah. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. A decision has been made. Simon. I'm afraid you're leaving us. But I wanted to thank you. You've done a great job. We've enjoyed meeting you. Thank you very much. Oh, much appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity. And, uh, thank you. I hope you'll find the right person the job. Thanks a lot. Listen, listen. I'm sure you'll be right. Let's uh, cook it on, boys, yeah? Let's go. See ya. <laughs> I think it went wrong with the presentation, really, if I'd done it more of a, a modern technique, maybe. But I just I didn't think in the end, and maybe I, I just went blank. Yeah, Sally, not my day. Obviously, the competition was high. I don't think I cut it in the end. Uh, I think the decision is definitely right. <sighs> well done, you two. So now on to the next part of the challenge. Good luck, Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. To earn the coveted job as executive head chef, Ben and Rishikesh will now need to push their culinary skills even further as they prepare to deliver the rest of their menu in an evening service. I'm one step closer to getting that job, uh, um, and I just don't want to leave uh, this place anymore now. I know he can cook, I know he, he's got more experience over me, maybe 10 years at least, so 
but yeah, without that, I'll, I'll give it my best shot. So hopefully it'll be enough. Both chefs face a tough afternoon preparing their next two courses. But for the family, it's time to start seriously thinking about the candidate's very different qualities. There's a very clear thing that I'd like to say to you, which is, you told me exactly what you wanted, the executive head chef. You want him to be able to manage people, lead a team, train, um, bring you to a Michelin star, but do it organically, do it while nurturing people. Maybe make a bit of money as well. Gosh, well, <laughs> you did, now you throw that in the mix. Oh. Oh, gosh. Oh. Um, uh, which is clearly Rishikesh. But I have to say to you, it would certainly be an enormous publicity PR boost if you had someone at 24 get a Michelin star. And I would say that Ben is that person. Now, there are other ways of pairing this apple, and that is of having him as a, an executive head chef and of having someone who manages some of the other aspects of the executive head chef role that you were looking for. We agree with, with you completely on that. I mean, Ben is an incredible young man. Um, and that's what, what our dilemma is. In Rishkesh's favour, he's also got a slightly different twist, I think, to his cooking. The and, Eastern Edge. The Eastern Edge. So, you know, he's got an edge and Ben has got an edge. So if we went with Ben, we've got to just slightly rethink the management of the kitchen. Yes. Yes. The restaurant will soon be full of diners, expecting to be served a Michelin standard main course and dessert. To make that happen, Ben and Rishikesh will each have two junior chefs working under them. How they instruct and manage their team is a vital part of the interview. Don't take too much of the meat and then hold a nice table. Okay, so you get a nice clean cut in there. We cook a baby onion whole in water. Yeah. After we cut them in half, take the petals and then just blow torch them. Very straightforward. No worries, yeah. The chefs have just 90 minutes to prove they've got what it takes to be the new executive head chef. I've never got a head chef, a potential head chef, to run a service for me before as part of the interview process. But it's a very useful exercise because it allows you to see how a potential exec head chef would um, merge with members of your current team. It allows you to see what friends, family, regular customers think of the various styles of cooking, and frankly, which they prefer. <laughs> Once you've whisked, show it to me so that I know what's going on, OK? Pretty confident, with two members of staff, 16 portions. Uh, whatever I've planned, it should be all right. Yeah. So we, we will have a good service. Pretty feeling good, good about it, yes. Yeah, it's going to keep on top of things, work quickly, work, work clean. Like this, uh, there'll be no problems. Ben's main is pork belly, langoustine, squid ink sponge, and a burnt cauliflower puree. He's following it with a buttermilk and lemon thyme panna cotta and the mysteriously named taste of carrot. I've chosen this because I like to eat it. I, I know it tastes good. Hopefully, it'll pay off. While Rishikesh, true to his classical training, is making loin of venison with butternut squash and chestnut cannelloni, and a baked yogurt dessert with chocolate sorbet and cardamom donuts. It is pure solid cooking, and that's my strength, so just stick to it. Ben and Rishikesh must match the costings used by the restaurant for their 58-pound four-course menu, giving them a budget of just £12 for the starter, main and dessert. It may not sound a lot, but even in a fine dining restaurant like this, there's very little profit to be made from each meal. When you look at the costs uh, of a 58-pound meal, there is an awful lot of cost built into that, which is all about the atmosphere and the environment. So, for example, this tablecloth. Yes, to have it laundered, taken out, starched, crisp, this will cost you in the region of about a pound. Then there's the cost of actually laying the table, over six pounds for each diner. And that's not including glassware, which is an ongoing expense. We estimate that there's probably about five, six hundred pounds a month in breakages. And then on top of that, you've got your labour. 
That's the big one. The cost, when you add all that up, is per £21 diner. Pounds per, per diner. diner. <laughs> OK? We also have to remember that on that £58 dinner menu, the government takes 20%. So after you've taken energy, staffing, consumables, table setting, food costs into account, before you have even bought a dining chair, mm -hmm. you have got a profit per diner of about? £5.50. <laughs> it is incredible, and this is why this is a very tough business. Yeah. Get the margins wrong and you can kill your hotel. Absolutely. Because you're only just keeping your head above water at the best of times yeah. on the restaurant front. Yeah. That's uh, correct. Uh, exactly it? right. So the family needs a chef who knows as much about counting beans as cooking them. They have got a lot of money that they're in control of. They are effectively controlling half of our business directly. But the success of that restaurant will also have a direct bearing on the amount of accommodation sales you have. An executive head chef has to do more than just cook. The successful applicant will need to run a team of chefs, as well as set the food budget, stock control, and create menus. The role demands leadership, management skills, and creative flair. Two Michelin-starred chef Daniel Clifford knows firsthand the demands of the modern kitchen. For me, I think kitchens, they're, they're really difficult places to work and you're, you're dealing with different personalities. They've got to believe in you and you've got to believe in them and you're building a small team that will turn into a big army. I need three quails straight away, yeah? They're in a rush. And these other two beetroot, I need two more beetroot straight away, please, Jack. It's all about discipline, it's about people understanding their jobs, but also if you train people correctly, they'll be able to do it perfectly. If, if you don't, that's when the disasters are going to happen. And for me, it's all about people understanding the way the kitchen needs to run. And communication is key in that. Trust is another one. You've got to trust the people that are working with you, but also they've got to understand you as a person and understand your expectations. You constantly are developing your staff to make sure they're better, to make your restaurant better. Table three. They're in a rush. The service is the most exciting. That's when you see people come alive. That's when you see whether they can do it or not. Let's start to push it now, please, boys, girls, and not knowers. You know, you'll say four minutes for a main course, and you've got to get four individuals all to come together to make a brilliant product, but in a four-minute time frame. And if it only takes one person to make a mistake, and that whole dish is ruined. Because if the, if the meat's cooked, and it's cut, and it's perfect, and the guy hasn't got the garnishes ready, the dish is going to be ruined. I'm in a situation where I can come in and I can say, right, I need this from you, this from him, this from him, and they'll go off and do it, and the new dish will come to the pass, and it's amazing. And that's when you know your kitchen's developing to a point where you've got people who understand your ideas. It's, it's a stressful environment. Not everybody's cut out for this. And for me, kitchens are run with military precision to make sure the customer is getting a brilliant experience. Alex and Barney want to see if Ben and Rishikesh can blend the military precision required for Michelin stars with the management skills they are expecting from their new executive head chef. Risk, okay? Risk the yeast, very important. For sure. Very important. Do you think you're, you guys know what they're doing? I'm keeping an eye at the same time cooking, so we are working as a good team, uh, communicating with each other and see where we are. Did you find out what their skill levels were before yes, you started? Yes, uh, that was important to know so that I can distribute the task perfectly. So I've got Did a sous chef and a pastry chef, which is brilliant. Yeah. So pastry chef's doing the pastry tasks, and sous chef, I've given him all the minute tasks. Okay, Great. fantastic. Great, we'll keep the teamwork going, because that's what it's all about. Thank eh? you. But what do Rishikesh's chefs think? How are you doing, Lee? Yeah, good. Are you um, comfortable about what you're doing? Yeah, extremely. We've all been uh, given a recipe file of uh, the different, all the breakdowns of the dish and what he expects, which is here. So it's uh, very. Yeah, it's very organised. We've got like, the dish itself, this is the main course, then all the different elements and the breakdown and step by step. Of, so you can't go wrong, really, if you keep asking advice and you know, on each stage. So we've got methodology as well as ingredients here. Rishikesh's experience shows in his organisation. But what about Ben? Look, he's done, he's done just a recipe, but no processes. So he's had to explain the processes. Mm. How have you used your assistants? Yeah, they're good. I'll put one on dessert, one on main course. 
Um, I'm, I'm helping as we go. You know, if they don't know something, then ask. We, I gave them uh, the recipes and the method each, so that way it, I mean, there's no there's no excuses. Anything should go wrong. Yeah. Did you ask them whether they knew what they were doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, yeah. they know. So yeah, and if they need any questions or any help, then they ask me. Yeah. Any mishap so far? Yes, yeah, so the thing with the carrot. Maybe it was great, too much, too big. It's fine. It's no problem to start again. How much experience do you have in managing? Managing a team? Not a lot at all compared to uh, obviously <laughs> this guy over here, you know. But um, in terms of working with a team, yes, as much as anyone else in it. In your first interview, you said that you ran the pass. Yeah. Did you run that pass without? Pierre Kaufman being there. Yes. You did? Yes. OK, fine. In the dining room, the guests are starting to arrive, including owner John and daughter-in-law Zoe. So that's in. Poor Billy's just basting this now. Lightly. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'd give the skin all crisp, but it's cool. Lee, you have to press on a little bit faster, OK? Just baste it, baste it, baste it, baste it. Perfect, some fine sauce as well. With the chefs rushing to get their mains prepared on time, Alex takes Barney and Christine aside. The first thing to discuss is the vital bottom line, starting with Rishikesh, who went over the most on his starter. So his is almost six pounds for the main, which is fine, and almost two pounds for dessert, which means that the starter still fits into a 12 pound yeah. complete cost yeah. menu which I think is what we were looking for, mm. isn't it? And it feels huge value for money, doesn't it, with the yeah. ingredients that's on the plate? Should we go on to Ben? Yep. Again, he went slightly over on his starter, price-wise, mm. I remind you, but both his dessert and his main come in at about two pounds. Right. So we're doing very, very well on that front, I would suggest. Yes. However, darling, his recipes are just recipes. There's no method yeah. written mm. down on his card. So mm. he's had to explain to them. And so they've had to re-grate the carrot. Mm. The methodology should have had, you know, grate the carrot at size, whatever. Then that would have avoided that happening. And if you were to escalate this into 10 chefs and 60 covers, those kinds of little errors can result in quite a lot of time wasted. Just so you've added milk, butter Yeah, milk. normal milk. Yeah, start again. Start again. Yeah. If the family are worried about Ben's organisation, there is no doubt he is at the cutting edge of the culinary world, just what the hotel wants to attract that Michelin star. He's using all his innovative techniques to impress the guests with tastes they'll never have experienced, like cauliflower spiced with burnt caramel and a squid ink sponge cake. Microwave sponge cake. Very basic, very, very quick, very simple, but it looks effective. Maybe, maybe some fish stuff that this guy hasn't seen before. The squid cakes will add an earthy taste of the sea, a clever reinvention of surf and turf. That's a tough act to match. Can Rishikesh deliver the necessary level of creativity? A bit behind time, but just have to keep calm and then focus. Right then. Is that 75? Sure? Perfect, yeah. Put the yeast in. I think they just have a very different style, both of them. Mm. Rishikesh has a very sound classical background, but um, he should be developing himself more to the more modern way. But um, if he has lost interest in what's going on now and the future, then he's not for us. Thank you. Thank you. You have, a, you have your blowtorch? Blow torch is in my bag. Perfect. All yours. Give it back to me, yeah? Yes. No sabotage. There's just a few minutes left to the start of service. How's it going? It's going good. Um, Langustines are prepped. This is the butter, milk, and lemon thyme panna cotta. The jelly needs added, so soon that will set directly onto the plate. So you'll get, when you take a spoon of the carrot cake and buttermilk panna cotta, you won't have less of something than more of another, you know? Are you worried now that you know he doesn't like carrots? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not afraid. I'm sticking to what I'm, I'm confident yeah, with. And, uh, quite yeah. right. It's too late to change now. That's exactly it, so, yeah. Is there any tricky element of this? Um, making sure that the pork belly is cooked. <laughs> Normally, it takes quite a while to cook, but um, one and a half hours, yeah, it should be fine. It should be uh, good with a nice crispy skin. Yeah. I think pork belly without a nice skin, yeah. Oh, that is it's probably to my yeah, ears. Exactly. Yeah, this I, is like my mum's Sunday dinner, you know? OK, thank you. Brilliant. Well done. Thank you very much. See you later, Ben. 
So remind us, what are you making? I am making the stuffing right now for the cannelloni. It's butternut squash, a bit of fennel seeds, of course the chestnuts, thyme, garlic, all mixed nicely together. And then finally I'm going to add some spinach to it that will give that lovely, brilliant colour and then roll it into a pasta sheet. And this will be pan fried, so it will be crispy texture and a soft texture. Smells absolutely delicious. Thank you. Do you know what Ben's cooking? Ben is making a pork belly uh, and uh, langoustine, so surf and turf. Uh, <laughs> it's very modern. <laughs> I'm very good. <blessed. laughs> With time almost up, both chefs still need to liaise with the front of house staff. Hello, hi, I'm Rishi, nice to meet you. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Michael, nice to meet you. I'll just brief you quickly. Right, who is going to communicate with me? There needs to be one voice only, please. Okay, I would come in and say check on. Perfect, yeah. And then, and then I'll, I'll communicate with you so there is no, no misunderstanding. That's brilliant. Just one question with venison. Do we ask how it's cooked or is it cooked pink? Uh, it is cooked medium rare. Okay. If someone wants it more than that, do let me know. Fine. But remember one thing, <laughs> you are my eyes and ears for the guests. Yep. And just enjoy the day, okay? I like the fact that Rishikesh shaked everyone's hand, introduced himself, found out their names, found out who was going to be giving the orders. It makes such a difference to front of house style. On Ben's more modern menu, his main is simply called pork belly, langoustine, cauliflower, ink. So it's crucial the front of house can explain it to the diners. Uh, okay, main course. I have a burnt cauliflower puree. I have squid ink sponge cake, which is here. This is the garnish, the langoustine heads. Some burnt onions. I have a puree. I have the pork bellies in the oven. I have a chicken sauce, which has been infused in celery and star anise. Maybe you want to write this down. Yeah? It's okay? Thank Perfect. Thank you. Did he say anything you didn't understand? No, it was just getting the fluency of the whole dish, I think. Oh, right. Sorry, the juice, eh? Yeah. Yeah. So, do you need him to repeat anything? No. Seen the thickness? Yeah. Not more than that, okay. Having stuffed and rolled his fresh cannelloni, Rishikesh pan fries them to add that crispy texture to complement the venison. Getting this right will be vital to the success of the dish. But he doesn't have long because the orders are starting to come in. Check on. Three covers, one venison, two pork belly. Three. Perfect. Oh, they are not coming out night. <laughs> it's time for Ben's pork, whether it is ready or not. Ben, how are you doing, man? Not too bad, are you? Are you ready? Uh, I'll be there. I'll be there. <laughs> same, same thing for me. I'll be there, mate. Good. You cut the bottom off. No worries. Rock salt, it's finished. No, it's fine. Sweet enough, man. Yeah. I think it's all right. Okay. Do the best. With everything cooked, all that's left is to assemble the final plates. To keep guests happy, both chefs will have to deliver their dishes at the same time. Rishikesh and Ben don't just need to impress Alex and the family. The opinion of every guest will be counted in the final decision. All the tables have selected at least one dish from each chef, and they've been asked to compare the dishes. We did exchange dishes, and I preferred the belly pork, but they were both absolutely excellent, really, really nice. They were both superb, but if I was to put my house on it, I'd say the venison won out, yeah. Thank you. Last check. Do you want to guess? One pork belly, one venison. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> All right, come on, chefs. Last, last plate. Yeah. And then we are on to the puddings. In the world of fine dining, Every dish that leaves the kitchen must be as good as the one before. It's about consistency, quality, style, and, of course, taste. These are the key points that Alex, Barney, and Christine will be looking for as they evaluate the dishes. I'm not going to lie, I was quite worried about the pork belly being cooked, but it was, it was perfect. It was juicy, it was tender, um, moist, and yeah, it, it works. I could have done a little bit more cooking for the pasta. 
I think if if they pick a point, that will be one. It was too late by that time. So what should we do? Thank you. So here we have Rishikesh's. There we have Ben's. What do we think of the presentation? Well, I think there's pros and cons of both of them. I, I think Rishikesh's is 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 a bit too safe, and this is very. Uh, Interesting in some ways, but it's it's the execution. I think they've played a bit safe. Ben served roast belly of pork with langoustine, burnt cauliflower puree, squid ink sponge cake, and a chicken sauce infused with celery and star anise. Well, I tell you, I was surprised by the cauliflower. Absolutely delicious. I agree with you, Alex. The cauliflower is um, really interesting. That's very different. That's flavours in the pork. The longest dean, delicious, perfectly cooked, lovely. Lots and lots of flavours, but frankly, the kind of problem that we knew might happen with the pork has happened. Mm -hmm. It's not very long to cook a pork belly, is it? And it's quite, it's... quite tough, isn't it? Yeah. Rishikesh has made loin of pan-fried venison with butternut squash, sage and chestnut cannelloni, accompanied by roast sprouts and a red wine and slow gin sauce. Shall we try? Meat's delicious. Mm. I would have liked some more sauce. The flavours are all there. The flavours are all there, but it's that cannelloni. The cannelloni is not crisp. Wasn't cooked through enough. Still neck and neck. <laughs> With customer reactions number one on their minds, Barney and Christine waste no time in getting feedback. <laughs> right, yeah, was the cannelloni was... cooked through? It was. It was quite heavy, the pastry yeah. part of it, but yeah. it went well with the with the venison. Mm. That was possibly the best venison I've ever had. It was tender, it was flavoursome, the puree was the best, the textures were great. Uh, that blew me away. It was quite clever how he mixed the, uh, the fish with the, the pork. It was quite clever mm. and quite um, brave, I suppose, as well. And what was the sponge made of? Um, ink, uh, squid ink yeah. in it. What did you think of that? That was fantastic. It was absolutely fantastic. And the cauliflower. Yes. Oh, that was just amazing. Yeah. Can you fry those on that side, please? Wait. Nice and golden brown. Mm. Yeah, so it's it quite evenly done, isn't it? Quite, uh, quite cool. Two baked vanilla and carrot away. Yeah, five minutes, please. With the dessert starting to go out, this is the last chance to win over the family with the quality of their food. Have a taste. Feel a taste though, you'll never know what we're serving, yeah? Will these puddings turn around the fortunes for one of our chefs? I'm pleased with what I did. It's food that I like to eat. I thought it was fine. And yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with the result. To, to impress Barney, Christine and Alex, it's a challenging task. I think I've done enough, uh, which is what they will see, the amount of efforts which we have to go through. Um, we will see. They say you eat with your eyes. So again, the first question is, how do the dishes look? I love this. Mm. Okay. Well, this is Rishikesh's. Yes. And it looks beautiful. Cardamom donuts, aren't they? No, it looks fantastic. I love the, the, the lemon and thyme that, that is set in the base there. Mm. That looks great, that's very smart. But I just put in that carrot cake mm. in that crumble. I think you just didn't want to do some, you know, a nice slice of carrot cake. But I think given the preciseness of that sauce, I think it would have probably done it really a lot of justice. Mm. Well, I'm longing to try it. I think we will find it tastes delicious. Mm. Rishikesh first. Rishikesh's dessert is baked vanilla yogurt served on a chocolate biscuit with poached mandarin salad, bitter chocolate sorbet, and cardamom donuts. That's delicious. Mm. <laughs> Just the baked yogurt. Ugh, oh, fantastic. 
and the cardamom donuts. Very clean flavours that actually work very well together. Really chuffed with that. Good. Try the other one. OK, good one then. Ben's taste of carrot is a crumbled carrot cake served with carrot ice cream, carrot puree and baby carrots on a bed of buttermilk and lemon thyme panna cotta with a raisin puree garnish. The carrot ice cream was delicious. The carrot crumble is delicious. I know you're not a big carrot fan, but that is yummy. The concept was very good. It's like, what do we do now? <laughs> After four hard days of interviews and cooking from nine hopefuls, it's decision time. So where are you in the process currently? It seems to me that as far as food is concerned, we have got two very talented chefs. Is that... I would completely mm -hmm. agree. Yeah, I do not... And you would as well, wouldn't yes, you? Yes, of course, yes. So then we've got to say who is going to be the best guy to run our kitchen. Do you have any questions that you'd like to ask them further? Because I can give you an extra couple of minutes with each of them, if you'd like. I think we'd like to do that. Yeah, I, I feel quite strongly that that would be a good thing. With the hotel's foodie reputation resting on this decision, Alex is calling in the chefs. I think this is quite a difficult decision to be made. I mean, both of them are such sterling characters, but it's putting your money on two very different horses, frankly. Ben must convince them to hitch their hotel to his rising star. I want you to tell us why it should be you. I feel that I can give something new that people haven't seen before. Um, I want to be able to take advantage of me working in a three-star restaurant previously and bring what I've learned there forward into this kitchen. Mm -hmm. I know how to, uh, to run a kitchen. Each service that we do, it will get better and better mm. in, in terms of consistency as well. It will be exactly the same. So as long as there's res enough respect and I have the backing to do this, then there's no reason why it can, it's not possible, you know? What's the story behind your tattoo? Uh, my, my tattoo isn't related to my nan. Uh, Mm. We've had great times. Uh, she passed away, so she was a star to me, so I put her on my own. Oh, that's nice. She'll be very proud of you. Uh, she certainly years. would. OK, well, thank you very much for that. And on your way out, could you just ask uh, Rishikesh if he could join us? No problem, for sure. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Well done, Ben. We'll see you thank shortly. You. Well done. They mentioned about my tattoo on my arm. Uh, I got this done even related to my nan. So, yeah, hopefully I've done her proud, you know. I don't know. He's such a lovely young man, isn't he? Take him home. <laughs> His nan would be really, really proud. Mm. Ben's clearly won over the hearts as well as the stomachs of the family. Will Rishikesh convince them he has the passion they are looking for? I'm just going to very simply say to you, why should it be you? For the last 13 years, I have... Uh, I'm not here to tell you my sob story, but... I've received quite a lot of backlash that all I can do is cook a curry and that's it, nothing else. And that's rather sad. That has always been my story. Really? Uh, all the time. I can cook a curry, but at the same time, I can do a Michelin star uh, quality food. Mm. I've always waited for a country house hotel. Okay. That's what I want to do. I will not let you down. Very, very good answer. We'll see you very shortly. Perfect. Thanks, Rishikesh. Brilliant. Thanks, Rishikesh. Bye. I'm feeling very nervous now. This is it. Heading this kitchen will be pff, a dream come true. And I really, really want it. Really. It's very modest from everything is achieved, isn't yes, it? Yes, very modest. We have to make a decision. Well, I suggest we uh, adjourn. <sighs> Rishi, Ben, thank you very much. Over to you, Bonnie and Christine. Well, first off, just thank you so much. It's been actually a real emotional journey. You're both fantastic lads, and uh, it's been a pleasure to get to know you both. You made it hard. We've, we've thought a lot about it, and we've made our decision. And the executive head chef is
Rich cash. The, bit, the best of my money, you know. I'm glad I lost through him, if anything, and not anyone else throughout this journey. So, yeah, take on the chin and move on, yeah. It breaks my heart to say no to you. I think Ben's loss here will be someone else's gain pretty quickly somewhere else. I always said by the time I'm 30, I'll have my restaurant, so it's still, still, still a plan. Welcome to our family. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. It was very emotional. I, um, still emotional. Rishikesh is definitely going to get them what they want, which is a Michelin star. And sooner rather than later, I imagine. He's shown a lot of loyalty where he's at the moment, and that was very important to us. And, you know, he's uh, got a lovely family that he's going to move up here, and I think that provides, you know, gives confidence that there's going to be longevity here. And, um, and he's also achieved a great deal in his career. Lost for words, but um, I, I, I've waited for this for so long. It's the ability to sleep at night, isn't it? Mm. Knowing that your kitchen's in good order. Very happy. <laughs> yes! Next week, a country pub looking for gastro status. This place needs a professional chef to come in. They go, I'm stepping in here and I can make it my own so I can be released back out into the business where I belong. Nine chefs will go head to head. What's going on? He cocks up his first dish. There's not enough vegetables on the plate. Yeah, I feel they get side orders. As they battle it out for one life changing job. Decision time. Tick tock, tick tock. Cat, can we have just one more quick word? Oh. <sighs>